Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. What happens to these ordinary people, these experience, subjective paranormal experience, when you compare it with a group of non-experience? Mm -hmm. And this I was able to do initially. Yes. And I was able to do this by saying, let me take the whole population of people who have an interest in so-called psi phenomena in ESP, in PK, extrasensory perception, mm -hmm. psychokinesis, in intuition. Enough interest to have joined a group like the Society for Psychical Research. In this instance, it was a group of people from the South African Society for Psychical Research initially. And I said, I'll take that whole population, every single member, we nagged them. We made sure that every single one of them responded. Mm -hmm. To your questionnaire. To our questionnaire. But initially, we just had some screening questions. Mm -hmm. We wanted to really sort out those who had these experiences compared with those who did not have the experiences. Yes. And in fact, we then clustered it and defined how detailed these experiences had to be and introduced criteria for veridicality, in other words, truth. Mm -hmm. So some kind of objective component. Mm -hmm. I spoke to my friend about it. I wrote about it. I did this, that, the other. As opposed to fantasy. As opposed to the fantasy and as opposed to somebody who is just imagining it or is psychotic. Mm -hmm. So we had two very nice groups. Yes. We did, incidentally, EEGs and them, electroencephalograms, but which is another side of it, incidentally, some earlier work and some work that were incorporated within this. Temporal lobe of the brain showed up in trans mediums more, but it hasn't been well replicated all the time. But in any event, so this way we were able to look at these two groups, mm -hmm. and strange enough, it was easier to find in that population people with large numbers of different kinds of subjective paranormal experiences, out-of-body experiences, healing, uh, intuitions, precognition, uh, psychokinetic Mm -hmm. skills, seeing auras, even maybe mediumship. And these were compared using a whole series of questionnaires, which are called the Subjective Paranormal Experience Questionnaires, and they went deeper and deeper and deeper. We compared this group with those who had never had any, any experiences, yes. the non-experience. Mm -hmm. And then we gave them a temporal lobe questionnaire. And wonder of wonders, people with subjective paranormal experiences, again, overwhelmingly, we're not talking about slight amounts, overwhelmingly, had far more, what I use the term, anomalous temporal lobe functioning mm -hmm. than those who don't. Now, anomalous temporal lobe functioning could mean many different things. Exactly that. And I wanted to make sure that I was using the term anomalous so that these people would not be labeled as having temporal lobe epilepsy. They would not be labeled as being abnormal because they have different kinds of symptoms mm -hmm. linked up with the temporal mm -hmm. lobe. In other words, you've got to be very careful in terms of description, in terms of phenomenology. So they had these different kinds of symptoms despite being normal.